this is a sport that basically milliseconds matter. So we need to make sure that we're there at the right time, uh, driving our, our best. My name is Ron Meadows. I'm the sporting director for the Mercedes F1 team. My name is Dominic Riefstahl and I run the race support operations in Brackley. So my name is Alice Casanovas. I'm George Russell's performance coach. Hi, my name is Chris Armstrong and I'm the wellbeing program manager for Mercedes AMG Petronas Formula One team. It's my role to ensure that we have the best support and care available in terms of wellbeing for all our team members. When we talk about wellbeing, we talk about three main elements here as a team. They're physical, mental and recovery. From a physical standpoint, we want to make sure that team members are you know, physically active, but this is both in the workplace and at home. From a mental standpoint, we want to make sure that all team members are happy, but also able to focus. From a recovery standpoint, we look at two real key areas. This is one, looking at workload, making sure that people have adequate rest and recovery so they can do their job. And then secondly, looking at the fuel. Okay, so much like we'd look at the car, we want to make sure that people are putting good nutrition, hydration into their system so that they are you know, well recovered. Health and well-being is very important to help the team get through the long calendar. The season starts in February, ends in November, December, 23, 24 races, five or six tests. And we become a family who support each other. Also, we have people based at Brackley who are dedicated for our health and well-being. Effectively, we support the track with people who can help out analysing information, gathering extra information, but without the focus being on the car itself, from an aero perspective, tyre perspective, uh, setup perspective or strategy. The positives of using the RSR is its efficiency. Running the entire RSR is cheaper than sending one person trackside for a year. We also have the advantage that we are connected live to the track. We also get to go home and see our families every night and we're not bound by the curfew so we can offset our hours and make sure that we make best use of the time. Obviously the season is getting longer and longer so we need to make sure the driver is ready to cope with all that stress and that starts in pre-season training. This is a sport that basically milliseconds matter so we need to make sure that we're there at the right time uh, driving our, our best. There's uh, time zone changes, uh, some races are hot, some races are more heavy on the neck. We try to make sure everything is ready, all the supplements, he's hydrated, he's eating the right things, he's sleeping well enough, he's recovering well enough. We've got lots of different roles within the team, so making sure that we've got solutions for all those different team members, whether it be shift pattern members, um, travelling race team members who can spend a lot of time out of the country, but likewise our factory workers and knowledge workers sitting at desks for long periods of the day. We want to give them the best opportunity to do their jobs. You know, we debrief after every single race with multiple stakeholders within the team, whether it be travel, legal, um, our race team, you know, race director looking at all these different different elements to make sure that we're giving the best support we can to our team members. Being away from home, you've got family to think about, so it's, it's not just the, the employee, it's also the families we need to take care of. One of the best things about current F1 regulations is we do have curfews, so it does stop us from working through the night. Certainly post uh, flyaway event, the team get plenty of time off to, to recover. Generally, they've got jet lag and they can't sleep very well. The biggest challenge when the team is on the other side of the world is obviously jet lag. Some people will start shifting very early during the week and will start offsetting their working hours earlier and earlier. The excitement of being involved in the race weekend is why we do it and why we don't mind either. We have very good guidance from a scientific point of view, from specialists on sleep, nutrition, on how to best adapt, what to do, when to start eating, when to shift and by how much in order to get us onto Australian time. It's whatever works for you, whatever works for one individual. So a normal race weekend, it changes. Every race is different. We go to different continents. Jet lag makes it really, really complex. Uh, we do as much as we can. Um, we even bring our own mattress to the hotel, so uh, we keep it consistent. The driver sleeps better. We know that not sleeping properly will have an impact on simple reaction time. 
which is critical for the start, for example. Physical exercise will feel heavier, so they'll feel more fatigued. Basically, my role is to make sure that the driver is ready for every race for the whole season. In terms of support that's available for team members, we have a really wide range. We want team members to be able to pick solutions that, that suit them as an individual. So it's everything from access to our gym facility, our restaurant that provides tailored food to make sure that it meets the needs of the team. But then also, you know, we have access to, to subject matter experts, whether it be physiotherapists, nutritionists, performance coaches, who are readily available to, to, to work with team members. The pit stops are very important in, in Formula One, as we've seen, you can win and lose races with them. The wheels now are much bigger and heavier than they used to be. We have physios, we have trainers, we have doctors looking after the guys to make sure we don't have any injuries. For years, Melbourne was the first race of the year and the excitement of it being the first race of the year made you forget all about the drawback of having to get up at basically midnight to come to work. But at the end of the day, you make it work and you, you use all the tools at your disposal to make the best of it and make sure that you work at your best. We provide everyone with the right tools to make the decisions and accompany them on their journey of making sure that they operate at their optimum is, is all that matters. Now, obviously, Australia, big time zone shift for us coming from Europe. We start preparing beforehand, we change the body clock a little bit, and then we use light and darkness a lot to adapt to the new time zone. And also in a street circuit like Australia, like the Melbourne GP, you'll be using more carbohydrates, so you need to make sure that you fuel before going into, into the race. We're a high performance team, always pushing the boundaries of everything that we do. So in any area, whether it be well-being, whether it be diversity and inclusion, whether it be um, you know just being the best place to work, we're always looking to, to, to win the win the challenge. I'm very proud of, of the race team and, and how they behave at events and how they uh, take health and well-being very seriously. When you've got such a large group, you've always got one or two people who've got different things going on in their lives and how the group pull together to get them through to make sure that they're not only performing at their best, but they they get a cuddle because often it's needed. The, the sense of satisfaction you get from really being involved and from having had a very active role in what happened in the race is, is indescribable. That's what we live for. Strategy calls by and large have all come from within this room and have very critically affected what we've done in, in races year in, year out. Obviously, we get a driver, in this case, George, that has a talent. So what I try to do is make sure that he can optimize that performance that he has already, right? That he can drive at his best the whole race, the whole time. 